Hi, my name is Susie. I'm one of the tour guides here at the quarantine station. Today we're going to be looking at the Wharf Precinct. Now the Wharf Precinct was the focus of a major upgrade here in the early 20th century. The station became federalised in 1909 and in 1911 the new director of quarantine for Australia was sent on a fact-finding mission around the world to work out exactly how quarantine was working in other countries. His mission was to bring back the very best of those quarantine practices and put them into place in Australia. He spent five months travelling the world and he discovered that Australia was ill-equipped to um, deal with the, the endemic outbreaks that were happening around the world, especially for smallpox. So he came back to Australia with many recommendations for all of the quarantine stations around Australia. Every single one of those was put into place here at the quarantine station at North Head. And most of it happened here at the wharf. We started to look at disinfection processes. We needed to get rid of the germs before they got into the quarantine station and therefore into the wider community. So down here we start to see these processes in place and that's what we're going to be exploring as we walk around the wharf today. Okay, between 1912 and 1920, we saw a huge upgrade here at the quarantine station. It was the biggest upgrade the station's ever seen. So down here at the wharf, we saw eight new buildings, all equipped with the latest technology in order to keep that disease at bay. So the building we're going to be looking at today is the shower block. So follow me over here and we'll check it out. Welcome to the first class showers. These are part of a long block of bathing blocks with the tanks in the middle in order to feed the water into the showers. The third class showers were down the other end of this block. These were the showers for the first and the second class passengers. I'm going to actually process you through the showers as though you were a passenger who arrived here on board one of these ships. So in here we have 24 shower cubicles, so enough bathing for 24 first or second class passengers. There would have been a foreman and a superintendent running this process and they would have actually been yelling instructions at you. They wanted to make sure this process was done properly and that it was done quickly. Their need to keep the disease out of the quarantine station was their primary concern. So when you arrived on board one of these ships, whilst you were out on the ship, the doctor would have rowed out to the boat to check exactly what was happening on the boat, what disease they were dealing with and how many patients were sick and how many were healthy. So the sick patients were the first to be landed and they would have been sent straight up to the hospital. This process was for the healthy passengers. So they were going to move on to healthy ground here at the quarantine station. They needed to be disease free before they were allowed in. So whilst they were on board their boat, they would have been asked to pack a change of clothes. That change of clothes would have gone through the steam autoclaves to be cleansed, ready for them for after they've had their shower. Then they would have been kept in a waiting room just outside the shower block. When it was their turn, they would have been told to line up at the bottom of the steps and they would have been marched into the showers. They would have been told to stand in the centre aisle, much like we are now. From here, we would have had the foreman on this side of the process. The superintendent would have been on the other side. Now, at this point, you're, as a passenger, you disappear into the cubicles. So they need to make sure that this is all happening properly, that this process is going smoothly and that it's going quickly. They've got lots of passengers out there to process. So they would yell at you to step into the first cubicle. The first cubicle had a curtain, so you had a little bit of privacy afforded to you. You would have stepped into the first cubicle where you would remove your clothes and you would place them in the basket that was provided here. So you can see the basket, the wire basket waiting here. So the wire basket would have then been taken off to the autoclaves for cleansing. All right, once you've done that, you would have been told to step into the second cubicle. In the second cubicle is where you're going to take your shower. You would be told to step down into the shower well to position yourself underneath the shower head. And you would have been told how to adjust the water. 
these were hot water showers. So uh, quite a new experience for a lot of people. A lot of people, even as a first or second class passenger, were coming from countries that didn't have running water. So to be standing underneath running water was very confronting for them. These were cutting edge technology. However, it wasn't just water coming out of the showers. The water was mixed with a chemical called phenol, which makes a solution of carbolic acid. So our passengers are actually taking a shower in carbolic acid that got rid of any lice, any disease that they might be carrying on their bodies. So how are they gonna make sure that you're actually taking a shower? How do they know that you are actually putting yourself under that running water? If you're terrified, it's probably not something you want to do. So the foreman and the superintendent are running around. They've actually locked you in. So the door is locked and they really need you to take the shower. They want to check that you're going to take a shower. So there is actually in every single shower, a tiny little peep hole here. You can see it just here. And either the foreman or the superintendent would have come around to check that you were under the water and covering your whole body in this carbolic acid solution. So your dignity, was much less important than keeping the disease out of the quarantine station and the greater community. All right, so once you've been in the shower, probably about four, four minutes, four or five minutes, um, you would then be asked to step into the third cubicle. Okay. And hopefully this is where your change of clothes is waiting that you packed on board your ship. So you would get dressed into whatever clothes are here, whether they're yours or not, um, and you would come out through the back corridor and out through the back doors and walk your way up to your accommodation. So it's a one-way process. You're moving away from the disease and you never walk back across contaminated ground. So this federal upgrade we saw happening in the wharf area between 1912 and 1920 meant that the quarantine station was really, really ready when Spanish flu arrived here in 1918. The showers being part of that success. We managed to keep our deaths here to a minimum, 67 deaths from Spanish flu, a pretty good record when we look at what happened around the rest of the world. The showers role in this was, was a very important role. It meant that people entered the station disease free and generally they stayed disease free. The process itself wasn't as pleasant. The carbolic acid could actually make your skin come up like a bit of a sunburn, which wasn't very pleasant. And also it was a very traumatic experience for many people in that they're coming into a new country, they've been at sea for so many weeks and they're coming here to start a new life only to be stopped in quarantine and to go through a process that could be quite confronting, not knowing exactly what's going to happen when you're in those showers. But all in all, a very successful process and managed to keep diseases and deaths down. Only two deaths here at the quarantine station after 1919.